Okay. Let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Starting. Here we go. And away we go. Um. There we go. Fix up my cameras. Alrighty. Hello again. This is Franz Cantor. Uh, Cantor's coronavirus caricatures. Or how I learned to love the lockdown. So a funny thing happened on the way to the forum today. Um, I'm actually doing another caricature, believe it or not. And the subject of today's caricature is this fellow here, this young man. And who is this young man? This is Phil Silvers. So Phil Silvers is a comedian and uh, very dynamic. You can see how much energy and muscles are at play in his face there. So we've spoken about this before with the, um, when we're drawing caricatures, you know, really, I really enjoy um, comedians who can, or people that can push and pull the muscles around their face because it just gives you a beautiful challenge to work with. And this, this guy is really incredible. So uh, a lot of personality. So he played uh, Sergeant Bilko, Master Sergeant Bilko and uh, ran for about four seasons. And that was in, I think, 1957, I believe, or 50, 55 to 59, something like that. So it was before my time, so I never really got a chance to enjoy uh, Phil Silvers until I saw him in um, uh, a movie. And it's one of my favorite movies. This, this is one of the animated, uh, intro and the outro is the, the character of Bilko, which is almost a, it's a cartoon caricature uh, uh, as it is. And um, I saw him in a film called It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which uh, I've referred to a lot in uh, my life. I've watched it quite a lot since I was, a, I think it was about eight when my parents showed me this film. And uh, it was playing at the drive-in, I remember, and we sat through it in the rain. And <laughs> everyone wanted to go. I said, no, 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 please don't go. Because I was, you know, it had the Three Stooges and Jerry Lewis and a lot of my favorites. And uh, they introduced me to this guy uh, in the film, Phil Silvers. And uh, he's very iconic. You'd see how much energy he's got. It's sort of like a really... Uh, energetic character explodes off the small screen the television screen so a really nice uh, range of uh, expressions it's just incredible energy and uh, dynamics to draw this is his uh, crew on the show this is Doberman of course who, who's uh, I can't remember his name I'll, I'll talk to you about that later but he went on to voice the character of uh, of uh, uh, well, his character Doberman, uh, he went on to voice the character for a famous cartoon character, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Sergeant Bilko. You can see there's a lot of expression, a lot of uh, personality, and a lot of opportunity for caricature. Now, two things hard about caricature. One is uh, bald people, <laughs> obviously. And the other thing is, um, uh, well, hats. But the other thing really is glasses, because anything that obscures the um, the anatomy or the you know the face makes it hard to sort of get a, a, a grip on the um, you know perspective and uh, the correct amount of details and things. But it's part of his personality, so we have to contend with it. You've got to be able to put it in. This is a great uh, lineup: Andy Griffith, D um, Danny Thomas, Lucille Ball, Jack Benny, and Phil Silvers. So he had, uh, you know, he was well respected in the in the comedy community. This is the one of the title cards. Uh, well, not title cards, an animated intro and uh, uh, um, to the Phil Silvers show, which is, you know, Sergeant Bilko. So, again, very 1950s, isn't it? Looks very uh, slick and two-dimensional, beautiful. 
That's the cover of the Phil Silver Show DVD collection. Sergeant Bilko. This is Doberman. <laughs> so there are four seasons. We're going to be working from this photograph, which is uh, Phil Silver's and Swinging Brass. So I have no idea. The composition is conceived by Nelson Riddle. I have no idea what this sounds like. I might uh, check it out on uh, Spotify later if I can find it. It's an interesting uh, album cover. So Phil Silver was born in 1911 and uh, died in 1985. He's known as the king, king of chutzpah, which is, you know, a Yiddish word for, you know, guts. So it's, it's more, uh, it's less guts and more nerve. You got a noive. So that's, that's literally what a translation would, would come out as. Um, so he started with a Phil Silver show in 1950s uh, sitcom as a U.S. Army sergeant, Ernest Ernie Bilko. He also starred in Mad, 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 Mad World and a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, 1967. He's a winner of two Primetime Emmy Awards for his work on the Phil Silver show and two Tony Awards for his perform performances in The Top Banana. And a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. So, um, really interesting man. This actually is a frame, a still frame from um, The Simpsons where they recreated this famous scene of uh, Phil Silver's in the convertible. The line is actually, this, this is no place for a convertible as the, you know, as it sails down this, uh, this river because this little boy in the film uh, tricks the Phil Silver's character into driving through the river, thinking that's only a few inches deep. Of course, it's it's much deeper. Um, so they recreated that lovingly in The Simpsons, which was fantastic. This is uh, you know this is him without uh, the hat, so you can clearly see the um, the 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 dome of the head. This is the Simpsonized version. You can see he's pink too. So that's, that's an unusual um, homage for The Simpsons, that all the characters are usually yellow. He's got a, he has this, uh, hi, how are ya? This is a, a typical uh, expression for, he's got some signature uh, expressions which we can talk about. This, this guy's great as well. So um, the characters that uh, he portrayed or that he influenced directly in the Hanna-Barbera pantheon of characters, of course, is Hokey Wolf. And this is Hokey and Dingaling, you know, and he was a, he was voiced by Doris Butler, who did a really close uh, rendition of the Bilko character. So this is very, very Bilko, Hokey Wolf, in the Huckleberry Hound show. So, you know, one of my favorite characters, actually, you know, it's really, it, it, when you listen to him, it's like listening to Bilko. It's fantastic. So that's, you know, even before I even saw Bilko, I was exposed to Bilko. I was literally in love with the Bilko character before I was exposed to Bilko, which is really, you know, incredible. Hokey Wolf and Dingling. This is the other um, cartoon character, which is influenced by Bill Coe, of course, Top Cat. This is the whole range. And Benny the Ball is actually voiced by uh, the guy that did Doberman in the show. So it's the same sort of dynamics, except now they're cats, alley cats. And the um, Colonel, of course, uh, is replaced by uh, Officer Dibble, Dribble, Dibble, Dribble. <laughs> This is, this is my all-time favorite cartoon is uh, Top Cat. And then, of course, second would be, you know, probably Yogi Bear. And then third would be the Flintstones. But this show is it's just got everything. It has a beautiful jazz refrain, uh, underscore, um, incredible uh, voice actors. And the stories are really tightly woven around the... Um, 
you know, the adventures of this of the, of, of Top Cat as a sort of a slick talking uh, Bilko type character. So really, really lovable. One of the first uh, characters that uh, that I remember drawing really well. I did a lot of cartoon characters growing up, but Top Cat I, I paid particular attention to. So the Top Cat character, um, uh, Benny the Ball, which is this guy here, the little guy, that's Benny. That is uh, uh, voiced by Doberman, um, uh, Private Doberman in the uh, Phil Silver show. His real name is actor Maurice Gosfield. And uh, that uh, everybody can kind of uh, hang their hat on and say, of course it is. You know, for years, until I, I researched this uh, today, I thought, is it possible they got the original actor to do his cat counterpart in, in Top Cat? Yes, they did. They did indeed. This is a lovely uh, cover or a picture by an ad for CBS, of course. CBS lineup. Um, and this is by the great Al Hirschfeld. So this is a Bilko caricature and Lucille Ball, Jack Benny, um, uh, Danny Thomas. I'm not sure who these guys are, but they'll be uh, there. This is a modern reworking of uh, the Bilko cartoon. This is another Hirschfeld caricature. Hirschfeld did a few color caricatures for our TV Guide magazine. So he's a very young. Uh, very accomplished. Of course, these are probably in the Hirschfeld Museum by now. These are the, I think, original um, cells from, and, and a pencil from the, uh, the opening intro. You can see it's in black and white. So, and this is the famous scene of, uh, you know, this is no place for a convertible from the actual film, from uh, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. So let's go back to um, our beautiful character and see what we can do. Now, I've picked this one because he's got the teeth, you know, he's got that, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, sort of uh, expression. Um, and I've taken the opportunity to produce some thumbnails and I quite like this one so this is quite you know I'm playing with shapes here so let's explain what's going on a little bit so this is a shape so when you do a caricature you look for an opportunity to show or exploit some simple shapes that you can play with, and uh, this this was a really nice one, and it's well balanced with a hat, I think. Um, lighting wise, uh, the light source is coming down from the top right, which means we're going to be uh, trying to create a believable shadow um, like this down on the left hand side of the object. The other thing to remember, of course, is the the area, the mask zone. So you've got the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, which is our focus, our area of focus. So we need to really focus on these elements, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Those build up a relationship no matter what the proportions are. They have a certain relationship and a rhythm and uh, we're looking at that. So even though we're, we're building, we're twisting things around, right? Um, we need to really consider the, um, the details and the relationship between these elements the, on the face. It's how we build the, uh, the likeness and also the story of the face. So we're going to look into that in more depth as we go. So I've taken the opportunity of transferring the thumbnail, drawing, redrawing the thumbnail up on the tone paper. And this is what I've got. So it's very close to the uh, thumbnail in terms of proportion. All right, so I've probably gone a little bit too tight with this, but it'll be uh, a nice uh, 
a nice uh, experiment for me. So things to watch for, it's got very dark brown eyes, of course, which uh, and very expressive whites of the eyes. So that's important to factor into this uh, into this drawing. We have to keep those, you know, the amount of uh, white around the eyes as much as we can. So, all right, so let's think about that too. The other thing to consider is the, you know, we're looking at perspective, so the, the face is beautifully proportioned and uh, placed in a three-dimensional uh, aspect. So, you know, it's a three-quarter view, uh, which means that the, you know, the center line across the, between the eyes and things is favored towards the left. So it's a three-quarter aspect. So, which means that you get a little bit of the front um, view and a little bit of the side view. So it gives us a chance to build a three-dimensional um, uh, three-dimensional sculptural view. So it's not flat. Okay. So that's something to to consider. Um, hmm. Have to be careful with this eye because that we need that white around it in order for it to keep um, to be relevant. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and try to exaggerate the space to match the left with the right eye. I think that might be helpful. Now a lot of his uh, eyes, um, his eyes are hidden, uh, you know, eyelids, etc., are hidden by the um, the glasses. But I think we can probably guess what's going on with uh, the geometry, with the um, anatomy. So and that comes from like experience of drawing eyes of muscles around the eyes etc this is what we're contending with here so these muscles around the eyes are incredibly important to expression because the skin and the folds of uh, fat are uh, pushed and pulled by the action of these muscles so they're a little bit more expressive than like you know, simply opening and closing for light. Um, they're, uh, they're really incredibly articulate and they can give, you know, uh, a, an incredible range, literally hundreds of, of expressions and micro expressions. So they're very, very, it's very important to think of the anatomy underneath the wrinkles underneath these shapes and uh, there's not very much of the skull showing through like cheekbones and things because he's got this incredible so you can see the dimples here they're incredibly powerful and deep so this is what you'd expect from say a comedian a stand-up comedian um, you know a physical person who uses his face as a, as a, a physical um, expression of his ideas and and comedy so it's very powerful very powerful muscles so let's uh, delve in here there's a lot of lovely shadows in this uh, photograph too which we're, we're going to try and look at you know if they're if they're relevant um, we'll include them if they're not we'll uh, we'll disown them well, we won't uh, put them in so if they confuse their drawing a little bit, then, you know, I think we just uh, use our judgment as to how best to render them. Actually, you might go into the black, use the black pencil, really, because I think um, we might get a good handle on the use of contrasts here. Because I said before, he's got these very brown eyes, so 
they're quite dark and expressive. glasses are very iconic so it's important to get that um, shape in. You we'll probably need to use a brush pen in a sec to fill that in. It's got this sort of a teardrop shaped nose which is interesting as well. So some of the elements that we're looking at um, exploiting here in the caricature we're trying to uh, create a, uh, a level of simplicity and um, detail so what's that mean we're trying to stylize it so, uh, in a certain way and that is like uh, giving us you know obviously the simplification or the use of this uh, peanut shape um, is, is a form of simplification and exaggeration so the exaggeration is by twisting and pulling this like a like putty, like clay. So we're getting a lot of forces, you know, we're exaggerating these muscles, we're exaggerating the, the dimples in here so that we can get some level of uh, force and energy in, you know, this is sort of like a stored energy form of uh, compressed energy you know it's a very interesting how do you how do you caricature somebody that explodes on screen as an energetic dynamo you know like a you know go 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 you know really um over the top um well the truth is it's difficult isn't it but you know you have to sort of pick your pick your battles in a way so you know one of those uh, battles that i think is uh winnable in yeah, this uh sense is the uh the coiled spring energy the you know the um the energy that's um compressed waiting to explode that's what this is it's sort of like a, a shrunken down boom about to explode outwards Some nice contrasts I think we've got uh, to build in here be good it's a lot of uh, lines that uh, interact and um, contradict one another so they push and pull in different directions you know like this these eyebrows here are very uh, very strong it's very expressive wrinkles There's a lot going on in his face, for sure. Incredible amount of um, energy. Let's try to put some uh, highlights in those eyes so we can remember. Um, their intensity in expression. Some 
glossiness here and there. Be good. Okay, just for a start, we're going to help that with the white pencil, of course, but you know, I think just for the start, we'll uh, start to play with the, uh, the highlight. So the idea of this is use a brown pencil, black pencil, white pencil, tone paper, and we're creating a sculptural drawing, a three-dimensional drawing, so it has form. Okay, light and shade and form. So it, it, it's really a, a different, uh, it's an easier project, um, an easier idea of building up tone when you have tone to work with, right? So you don't have to build up so much. You don't have to cover the paper with, uh, with so much pencil. You just concentrate on making the contrasts work for you some shapes coming forward in space and others receding and then the light and shade you know uh, cons uh, idea of um, of these uh, of these elements So keeping my eye on all of these different shapes and what they what they can bring to the uh, caricature, um, you know, different textures. Obviously, you've got the the visor here, which is glossy. So it's got that means it's got a a reflection here and there, which is say over on this side. So there's a few lights happening. As I said, there was a, you know, the general lighting is probably over on the right hand side. Um, but there is also reflected light coming in on the left. So both of those are creating a, an interesting, an interesting um, effect. All right, here we go. Um, this is going to be an interesting, I'm going to stylize this a little bit, this eagle, of course, you know, I'm not going to put in a lot of bows, and, um, what are they putting in there, arrows and things, of course it's a seal, state seal or federal seal I think, of the army, US army. Right, um, so this is, these are quite, this is really nice. This is a very important shape, of course, the, um, the visor and the cap. Quite uh, important to get that right. Okay. So some I'm stylizing a lot of it, some of the details I'm sort of uh, foregoing, but I think most of it can be uh, captured. Yeah, very good. Cool. This is the summer hat, I think, in this photo, so like a light khaki. Those of you that have uh, grown up with school uniforms will remember <laughs> summer khaki. <laughs> what horrible, what a horrible thing to have to wear uniforms to school. I found it really inconvenient. So um, the comedy in the Phil Silver show was um, extraordinary. Some of the, you know, the, what they could pack into half an hour of television uh, w was amazing. You know, and they had a lot of um, celebrity walk-ons. You know, Bing Crosby. Um, 
quite a few people. And of course the uh, the creator Nat Hiken uh, obviously went on to create things like um, Car 54 Where Are You with uh, um, what's his name Joey uh, Joey Lewis Joe Lewis and um, Fred Gwynn who of course is the uh, you know Herman Munster. So that's where I would have picked up those uh, actors from. Joey Lewis was from um, It's About Time with Imogene Coco. And obviously, Car 54 had Al Lewis and it was Grandpa and um, Fred Gwynn who was uh, Herman. So I that's where I would have picked them up. As I said, growing up, I never saw the Phil Silver show. I didn't see it till I was an adult, you know, and then just sort of like on YouTube or something. So not really a complete collection until I got the, the DVD set. And uh, in researching this, of course, I spent the last couple of weeks refreshing my Phil Silver's um, comedy um, so I'm, I'm recently Phil Silver's Phil Silver's um, uh, informed Very, very interesting comedian. Some great, um, you know, I watch it probably about four times a year. It's a mad, 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 mad world. And I see, I get something out of it differently every time I see it. There's just some incredible um, iconic performers, performances in there. You know, one of my favourites is obviously Sid Caesar, who plays the dentist. I think he's got the longest uh, um, um, screen time, amount of screen time on that uh, film. Let's try and get that hat, um, hat curved. Um, And Phil Silver's got a beautiful um, scene with uh, Jonathan Winters, who plays the truck driver. And then later on with uh, Don Knotts. In, um, I think he <laughs> tries to, I think he has to steal his car or something. It's like, it's an incredible, um, it's an incredible film of, uh, cause and effect and you know I think it's a beautifully um, caricatures human nature Sometimes the black pencil, if you just use it on the grey paper, a little bit severe and stands out a bit too much. So I think it's a good option to use the brown pencil to, like, just to warm it up a little bit. Yeah, that'll do. 
So there's a texture over on this too, but uh, oh. back to the black. So I'm going to hit this uh, with a black brush in a second just to uh, help with that. Um, those glasses kick up the, uh, the contrast a little bit. Be good. Leave a, a rim, like an edge for a rim light on that side of the hair. I think it might be good to give it a little bit more dimension. Let's get that. Uh, let's get those glasses done. Right. So the brush is going to help with the establishing a lot of the contrasting, like the hi the hierarchy of light and dark. Because um, black pencil is black, but you know, um, it, it breaks up a little bit on the paper. This is really nice uh, brush pen, this SIG. It's got a, um, it's like Indian ink, so it's quite strong. Okay. Hmm. And of course, because it's a brush, you can get like a beautiful thick and thin stroke. There you go. So you obviously want to manage the thick and thinness a little bit so that it's not all... Generally, um, you know, shapes that are like the underneath it, the under part of, of shapes have a thicker line. Not always, but you know, mostly. So the top of this cap be very thin and then gradually get thicker as we turn around like so. Yeah, it kind of works. All right, now the glasses. So this is going to be an interesting thing. We've got. Uh, what if we're going to? We may need to um, put in some rim lights on the glasses as well because they're glossy after all. So we'll have a look at that. Sometimes uh, you you have to use your gut feeling on to uh, as to how to treat glasses um, because you know even though it's a flat color um, you need to establish a structure you need to establish some form of um, shape. You know, in the shapelessness of the of the black. So I generally don't like to paint them solidly. You know, if I can leave little lines here and there that show edges facets or something. It's usually a good uh, thing to do. And you'll notice uh, that the left one is bigger than the right. That's fine. We're exaggerating. So, you know, there isn't any um, right or wrong rules. We're bending perspective and we're bending proportions as we go. 
And uh, that's one of those uh, things. Symmetry goes out the window for, you know, a, a dynamic effect. Ears are fantastic things to draw. Um, and of course, his has got a very iconic shape to them, I think, which is uh, interesting to capture. All in all, I think it's it's coming along nicely. Okay, so there's that protuberance inside the that part of the uh, the ear. A shell-like ear, my dear. A shell-like ear. Very cool wrinkles. Here we go. Now the wrinkles show a lot. Uh, they speak a lot about the energy, you know, pent up energy of the uh, of the user of uh, Bilco. Um, it's uh, incredibly expressive. So there's a lot of um, exaggeration here, and that like a cartoon character is beautiful to draw it's beautiful to find it and it's beautiful to express it and, and to um you know to find these lines and to and to appropriately address them with the with the pencil it's great fun of course you're looking at overlapping forms that all overlapping forms have a reference to the light and shade, to the shadows, etc. You know, so it's all a, it's all part of the the referencing and the checking and the, you know, a lot of it is is um, almost subliminal. It's kind of like, you know, a, a, a gut feeling that you get on how appropriate they are, how, how strong these these forms are that you're drawing. It's a really interesting. There's a bit of gloss uh, happening there, so bit hard for me to see how they're working but I think um, we've got a good chance of achieving what we've started now the mouth is this guy's mouth my god he makes this this mouth is is uh, an incredible thing of beauty it's um it is so full of muscles and forces at work here you know there's a lot of stuff going on so really looking forward to this this whole area this t-zone you know that i spoke about before right not only gives us a, 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 a an area to focus our details in but um is really exciting it's very exciting because there's so much energy this guy makes a living by yakking by talking He's very clever, he's very sharp. In many ways, he is Bilko. You know, Phil Silvers is the Bilko character, like Top Cat. So he's very, very sharp, very intelligent, and very slick, you know. He's sort of like the ultimate con man. You know, you get conned by Bilko. Um, it's a, a really a, a enjoyable experience because he does it so effortlessly and so so well you know it's it's like watching genius at work some great shapes here look how beautifully articulate they are and, and strong A great face. <laughs> okay, so 
Now we get down to these teeth. And again, like the the other features, they're very particular. So you look at the at the relationships between each the upper and lower jaw, the upper and lower teeth, and each individual tooth. Oh, it's really cool. So much, it's like a, I get to the, the, you know, the dimples and the wrinkles and the, the forces of action in the face, and, and I get really, really excited by by these um, forces at work that I can see, they're, they're really powerful and strong. Very, very cool. So a lot of this stuff, because I've moved it because of the exaggeration of the shapes, I've uh, created a new line, but of course, you know, they all join up as a sort of a, a rhythm. Wrinkles and lines join up to, you know, to each other. It's like uh, creeks and rivers have a relationship to one another, don't they? Because one flows into the other. And then eventually they flow down to the, to the bigger, um, to the sea. So it's a really exciting amount of uh, contained energy, compacted and ready to explode at any given moment, you know. And that's what I'm trying to capture here. That's what I'm trying to get. So, this is going to be good fun. Nearly there, folks. Nearly there. We're capturing it and highlighting it and contrasting. We're building up a relationship here with these fantastic forms and muscles and, you know, forces at work. So, this is really exciting. You can, if the drama is palpable, <laughs> you can feel it. Yay! So much drama, so much energy. This is, a, you know, it's a beautiful uh, expression uh, that I'm working on. Yeah, pick the right one. You know, sometimes you do a caricature and you think, eh, did I pick the right expression? Is it iconic enough? Yes, folks, this is iconic. This is going to be work. This is going to be so exciting. Okay, let's go. I am so excited by this face. Let's hope I don't stuff it up now. <laughs> of course, anything can happen. I presume it will work. You know, I'm, I am hopeful that it will uh, come together nicely. We're going to get some beautiful highlights into those uh, cheeks and into the teeth and and with some reflections and things, so this is going to be a lot of fun to do. Nearly there, nearly there. Let's try to get some of these curves into the um, the band on the cap over here, and maybe also on this side as well. A little bit of uh, help with the contrasts. Cool. About some more up here, I think, to build up a bit more shadow. Give a little bit of help to the contrast in the cap, in the edge. I think that works. All right, now go back down to the face. Right, so, you know, I don't want to outline everything. I want to sort of keep an appropriate level of uh, light and dark. But the black also helps with um, clarity. So it clarifies a lot of the shapes. 
that you're creating with the brown pencil. So it has, you know, both um, a way of creating, of in, uh, increasing the contrast, but also the clarity. You can help with the clarity. So I've exaggerated this mouth shape here, but I've still kept it very, very tight. And I've exaggerated it because I need more teeth showing. I feel that it needed more teeth showing. I've, you know, it's sort of a, it's just a feeling that I, that I was following. Not so much, you know, what I'm seeing in the, in the reference photograph. It was just more of a, a case of, it feels that it should be tighter. It feels that you should have more of the bottom row showing. So, um, you know, it's a balancing act, I guess, of uh, what you see and what you feel. And, yeah, oh, there's a beautiful, see that there's a, a light that's filling up a lot of the shadows here, but I can feel also the incredibly deep dimples around this cheek area. So there's a lot of um, opportunity for um, creating a, a roundness that, uh, that's going to sort of give it an incredible look of flexibility and you know, change the shadows a little bit around the mouth. But um, energy, like a, a build up of energy. So it's good, I think. That will work. So the chin is pushed down into the neck, into the the double chin, and that's giving us a lot of this uh, spring, coiled spring effect. So far, so good, eh? Let's go. Okay, so we've got this. We'll help that with the pen, with the brush in a sec. Some of these lines need a bit of uh, force applied to them, some more thickness to give them more weight and importance. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Really excited, really excited. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with a brush as well, but I want to show you how, how beautiful this can be. So this beautiful round form. And now to exaggerate the roundness of this form, I'm going to use the brush to build up some, some weight here and there. Just like uh, slowly, very carefully rotating the brush in your grip and using more of the side of it and also at the same time pushing it uh, harder into the, onto the paper surface. I'm by no means an expert at brush style or technique, um, but I I try. Here we go. Again, you know, the undersurface of things you can afford to give a little bit of thickness to. Let's get into the, the side of the head. Out there.
that's nice. Um, before I put the brush onto the shirt, I'm going to uh, make sure that those lines are the right um, direction. Probably colored the top here, I think. Great. So it's got like a particular logo, Fort Baxter logo on the arm. Oh, try and remember, um, that's it there, so. And go back to the braid on his jacket, on his shirt. Of course it's got that, uh, He's a sergeant, he's decorated with a French flag there. Um, all these like scout buttons. All these different uh, things that uh, the master sergeant has accomplished. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Nearly there, <laughs> nearly there, he said, again. That'll do, that's good. Okay, so close now, we've got a lot of, uh, we've established some really nice curves with the brush. Um, I'm actually going to um, help out a little bit in the shirt too. Cool. And of course the tie is black. Cool, there you go. Right. Um if we can darken this one, make it stronger. Yeah, that works all right. Okay, so now we fix up the bottom of the picture area. And of course the name ribbon. A bit crooked, but that's okay. It's fine. All right, now let's get into it. We've got the brown, we've got the black. Let's uh, continue with the white and um, go back to our picture, wherever it is. Where are you, picture? Um, <laughs> lost him. Woo! Okay. Uh, there it is. Cool. All right, so there's some nice uh, reflections coming in, which we need to capture. That would be nice to do. Um, some of it is reflected light. Some of it is um, reflected from the left, some of it from the right. So... The level of uh, these little details and things, you know, you may not think it's important, but it adds to the believability of the um, of the face. So if they're there, they're there for a reason. You know, things that 
you know obviously the shadows created by the by the um, the frames of the glasses there's no glass in the frames incidentally so uh, I presume I, I'm pretty sure he needed glasses but uh, in the show they didn't have them because of the you know the reflective properties of uh, of glass so I don't know how we would have um, managed it some great ivory shine happening in his teeth going to help that with a white pencil of course this is a very soft white pencil so it's, it can lay down quite a lot of pigment um, and again you know I'm using the grey paper to establish some of that tone it's going to be helpful These eyes are very white here. Help them out a little bit. And of course, as I said to you before, it's, I think it's important that this um, the white areas around the eyes, which are you know very um, key to that expression working, the comedic, um, comedic, exaggerated. Uh, expression so we're going down into the cheek area here and that's where the would be another shine down here very shiny very reflective and it's catching a lot of the uh, light because it bulging out and very round it's, that will work and this is also catching light down here cool all right let's um Help that out a little bit there. So the idea with the white is not to, of course, not to colour it in. You're not colouring things in, you're just establishing a hierarchy of, of tone. So black to white, so whatever is you know, appropriate level of shine, I guess, to establish the, the texture. You're getting up here to the a lot of shine over on this area, which might help with the brush too. But um, this is uh, very powerful. These wrinkles at the top of the, um, the forehead, because they also um, uh, what do you call it? Echo the eyebrows. So the eyebrows. It's sort of like a rippling effect. Gradually. You know, like a, throwing a pebble in a pond, it sort of ripples out, creating a um, an outward spiraling or an outward um, rippling force. Hmm. 
a bit of in the shadow area there's a bit of shine and reflection what are we doing with this let's, let's help this out a little bit here that will work and also a reflected light coming in on this side might work too You know the the other characters, the um, supporting cast for Bilko. It's really important to have like good um, a good cast, and they have a really good cast for the show. So you know, characters kind of if they're well developed, they they sort of anticipate their own story. So this is true of um, the characters in Bilko. So each. Each one of them have an opportunity to, you know, like Doberman, have an opportunity to show these adventures and, you know, about uh, something that happens to them, which is, I guess, part of the character building process. But, you know, it just it floors me that you've got so many um, characters that's so well developed. And that means there's so much opportunity for story. You know, you want to hear about each one having these adventures. And also, you know, there's a, like a recognition factor for a lot of these um, support actors, support cast, because they appear in other shows like, uh, you know, The Monsters or The Cale's Navy or something like that. It's great fun seeing them in other things, you know. You sort of get a, a really a good appreciation of their range of uh, talent. Um, it's really good to see. Right, so now we're getting down into, we're establishing a side light here to give it more three-dimensional qualities, right? Um, so that's, that's important. It's got a nice sculptural feel, I think, at the moment. It's working quite well so far, so good. Uh, still early days, though, you know, we're nearly there, but, you know, we've still got a lot of... Um, um, character building, a lot of um, modeling to, you know, establish with the white pencil. Using a sort of a crosshatch or a hatch line technique of building up the texture, which is nice. See how well the um, the contrasts work out, you know, with the light next to the dark. It just looks extra shiny. This works really, really well. We go into the teeth, establish that uh, set of pearly whites. It's a big feature for uh, Bill Coe, his teeth, you know, his smile. Because, uh, you know, as a comedian, uh, Phil Silvers obviously uses it an awful lot. But uh, the character is a con man, after all, and, you know, they're, they need their smile, don't they? They need that infectious smile so that the level of 
trust. Trust in me, you know. This is a uh, paint pen uh, with a brush tip. So it's giving us a, a little bit of a help with the feathering, the gradiated uh, light. It goes, you can do a thick to thin line as well with this quite well. Yeah, that's good. I'll just help out this cheek area here to complement this one. That's good. What I might do is with the pen, you know, as I've done the highlight around the um, the hair and this this side of the face, I might try to do the same with uh, this side. A little bit, be very careful though. Won't do it too much. Just a little bit. Just to firmly establish this round shininess of the skin. Right, here we go. Good. So, get some light happening here. Some more light happening here. Got the lips happening, good. Now the chin with the beard rash over here. And build it up to this. Uh, the cheek is throwing a shadow because you know it's coming down from the right. The main light source, so the cheek is throwing a shadow over the, the mouth area. It's not so evident on the teeth, but uh, down here it is. It's working quite well. So let's try to help that out a little bit. Like so. And this one here, like so. And this one here, like so. And then this one here. Shadow from the visor. Yeah, that would work. I think maybe also down on this side of the face too, to help out that shadow area. Um, that's good, that would work, I think. Uh, we need that to be lighter. Okay, that'll do. Cool. Right. Uh, so down here it's not so dark. We'll just try and get rid of that uh, overspill of pencil, brown pencil underneath. We'll just clean it up a little bit. And we just want to put a hint of light. Ooh, looks like it's down there. I want to put a hint of light because of the you know, the shininess of the skin, right? So, a little bit of a hint of light catching that part of the fold of skin and probably also for this part as well. Just a touch. Okay, so far so good. There we go. Um, what else can I do? Let's put some Shine on the buttons.
should put some highlights in here. Of course, it's a summer khaki, so it's lighter. So I guess it's all right. Lighten this area up. Let's pick up a bit of uh, rim light over there, maybe. That's enough. I don't want to draw too much attention away from the face. Yeah, it's good. All right, now, what can we do now to stuff things up? I mean, fix things up. Let's uh, actually, let's try to uh, use some black pen in the... We could use white pen, but uh, in this case, I think I'll try to use a black pen just to try to articulate this area a bit more, uh, the negative space. Now I'm going to come up, I don't want to lose the thickness of the, of the line that I've established with the brush, so I'm just not going to touch it with this. Because if I touch it, it'll just disappear into that space. So I'm going to leave this sort of um, a gap around it, almost like a, I'm, I've cut it out with scissors. So what that does is reinforces the contour of the, uh, the shape that I've created, you know, and it looks nice and chunky. This is a Posca pen. Poscas are really good. They're like graffiti pens in a way. They don't sink through the paper, so there's no damage to, you know, the um, the paper underneath or on the other side of the page. They sit nicely on top of the page and they dry very flat, which is exactly what you need. Um, especially if you want to scan this work on a scanner, you know, um, later on, which I'll probably do, and it just makes it look nice and um, crisp so it doesn't interfere with the, the details so much. Um, years ago I used to use Indian ink for this purpose and I found it to be very hard to manage because um, you know it pools, it tends to pool a lot into little puddles and there they give a very um, uneven effect, they dry unevenly. Um, sometimes even so glossy that they're metallic almost and that's not a nice thing to scan. You've got to then fix it up in Photoshop. I found that these are very versatile and handy and you know like I've shown you with the white um, versions of these they're opaque they don't mix with the pencil which is cool because then you can just uh, use it as much as you like it's not going to be colored by the pencil lines underneath it doesn't mix with it it's very opaque you can draw it, you can paint it on glass if you wish. Very versatile. You know. I'm actually looking forward to um, doing some animation cells with uh, a brush version of this uh, um, thick and thin brush version of this Posca marker. I think that would be great fun. I haven't done animation cells since I was a kid. It's got a whole, you know, a whole, uh, it's a very nice technique, isn't it, animation cells? Because you paint, you do the, the inking on one side of the cell and the paint on the back and it looks really super schmick and neat and, you know, you don't have to Photoshop it or anything, it's drop it over a background and it looks great. Let's try to get some thicker paint marker. Look how thick these poskies come. This is like a graffiti artist's dream 
Imagine tagging your big fat name with this big fat marker on a bus seat. Well, you can't do it on bus seats, but bus walls or whatever. Not that I'm advocating that, of course, it's just, uh, you know, you're better off using things like that if you're going to deface property because this stuff's not that permanent. You can very easily wash it off, which is nice and polite, isn't it? No one wants to see your stinky old tag <laughs> adorning um, bus walls forever. So, what are we going to call this? We'll just call it Sergeant SGT dot B I L K Sergeant Bilko. So, that will dry beautifully, nice and flat. Um, you know, it has a lovely um, uh, quality about it. I really adore Posca markers. You know, I have I have uh, colours as well, but for these purposes, you know, the black and the white are really nicely uh, they nicely um, help the drawing uh, by establishing a, a, a beautiful contrast. So this is uh, Sergeant Bilko. Let's have a look at the reference material. Hello, how are you? <laughs> so this is him, and um, let's get a nice uh, there he is. Isn't he fantastic? You know, Sanjay Bilko. He's such a great uh, actor, such a great uh, comedian. And there he's with... Um, um, uh, ooh, what's his name? Doberman, of course. And uh, you know, he plays Benny the Ball in Top Cat. And this is why I love uh, Sergeant Bilko, because of Top Cat and... Um, the other cartoon character, uh, which is Hokey Wolf. So, this is Franz Cantor saying, I will catch you on the flip side.